Good morning. <laughs> this is Jeanette. <sighs> I am going to start chatting. Today's March 28th, Tuesday, on a Tuesday, 2023. Enjoy the chat. Good morning. Oh, wow. I'm doing the chat while I'm walking, doing my steps. So it helps some movements in my legs, in my arms, in my body. It also brings up, uh, you know, when we do our exercises, I don't know if you feel that way, but when I do my exercise, I'm doing myself a favor. I'm doing my body a favor. I'm doing my brain a favor. I'm doing every part of my body a favor, including my mind, my brain, my thoughts, my thought concepts, <sighs> the whole package. So this is why I do some exercises. Uh, I've done that since I was taught that since I was really young, <laughs> very young. I would do exercise. We all do this naturally. You know, when we're children and young children, we naturally look at our hands, look at our arms, look at our legs before we even start walking, before we even start crawling. All babies do that. <laughs> it's that natural, wow, the wonder of me feeling. <laughs> we all have that. Each and every person, every human being, that wow, the wonder of life <laughs> from the time we were born. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just thought I'd. Uh... So, anyways, as we get older sometimes or mature, a little bit more mature. We still need to, and you know, activate those as we learn how to crawl and we learn how to walk and you know we learn how to feed ourselves, right? The Bible's kind of like that, you know. Like someone was saying yesterday, the Word feeds us. The Word. Close us. The word heals us. The word helps us. The word, right, is a salvation word. <laughs> the word is, which is, means the same thing as help. The word is loving. The word is kind. The word is gentleness. You know, the word is. <sighs> Anyways, I really like that. <laughs> it's so true. Sometimes you just need that refresher, the reminder of how blessed we are. The word is blessing, right? The word is nourishment to our souls, <sighs> as food is to our bodies. Oh. oh, wow. It's a great morning and a Tuesday morning. Oh. I like to meditate on things that are about gratitude because when we shift our focus from pain, oh, yes, <laughs> that's going to be my main focus as well. Pain and fear, right? Those are two things that correlates to grief, any type of grief we've had in our life, whether uh, when we f first start crawling and we fall down <laughs> on the side, it feels like a type of little hurt, you know, a different type of level of, that would be the little T, right? A different kind of, of trauma feeling 
embarrassed and getting back up, right? Uh, walking and falling flat on our behinds when we're toddlers and we get back up. <sighs> For some, it's harder to do. Once you fall, you just, it's that whole process of, it's okay, you know, you can still do this that encouragement. Healthy parents do that for their children. Is Oh no, they can't do it. <laughs> That's it. That's all. Right? Healthy parents will say, oh yes, they can. I know they can. And they talk to their child and say, yeah, I know you can do this. Not out of coercion now. It's not a co co coercive uh, abuse. Right? A healthy parent will say to their child, you can do this when they see them, you know, having, struggling, because children struggle when we fall flat on our face, <laughs> our butt, for example. We all know what struggling means. We all know what failing means. We all know what feeling, like we don't have this yet, feel, means. <coughs> we haven't acquired that skill yet. So just from experience, from bad experience, and what is bad experience really? When somebody says, I really had a bad day, what they're telling you, they're talking about their trauma or their hurt and their fear. And they need someone to talk about it, somebody they can trust, you know, a confident, a friend, someone they can trust. Eh. So, yeah, this happens with children, and this happens with grown children. This happens with <laughs> parents with their grown children. Now, again, within the boundaries, respecting each one another's space, you know, and regard and respect, really. Uh, the reason why I mentioned respect so much because I think I missed on the mark I missed the mark on that quite a lot in my life like what's the boundary and what's appropriate for me to al allow other people to treat me or talk to me or not talk to me or that kind of thing what's acceptable and what's not acceptable what's negotiable and what's not negotiable you know uh, anyways I just thought I'd mention that. It's not about a rule book of all the wrongs, the <laughs> wrong things we do. And we never achieve to do it correctly. Really, uh, rules when it comes to boundaries is about what I feel safe and what does not make me feel safe. Right? And the same for our people in your, our lives. What makes them feel safe and what doesn't feel safe? You know, it's a matter of respect. And when we learn as codependence and codependency behaviors, when a, a Harriet Breaker is a, uh, one that I listen to, uh, uh, about the people pleasers, codependency, I would have to look it up, but I'll put the link in the description below of this audio. But as she talks a lot about, you now there's a lot of patterns of what's codependency. What is codependency? And, and there's a lot in there, a lot of chapters about, I think of up to 13 or 14 chapters. It's like, wow. And I was so eager. And I ordered the look, the book on Amazon. Uh, just look up Harriet Breaker. You can find it that way as well. If you uh, to on your Amazon app. <sighs> yeah. Anyways, it's really uh, inspiring on how she's like. Do you tend? I think it starts something like this. Do you tend to want to pe to people, please? And are you the kind of person that wants to do everything for everybody? And 
you you would like to expect it to be reciprocal but you do the work and you do the work and you do the work but you're not seeing the you know you're sowing the seeds of faith seeds of love seals seeds of healthy communication you're sowing the seeds of planting <laughs> you know all the great stuff about love and sp flourishing for for healthy relationships and you keep watering the the relationships and applying the word of faith or applying you know seeds of faith and of healing of knowledge of understanding and you know all of this starts with love are you the kind of person that does this and i'm thinking oh, yeah <laughs> and then she goes on to say and when those things you don't see the harvest yet i'm <laughs> kind of kind of talk you don't see that harvest coming back to you you're waiting for that reward that uh, you know you're waiting upon and, and you're just waiting for that beautiful word to come back to you good measure pressed down shaken together kind of thing it's just like lord i've been sowing my seed now seed of love respect honesty to the best of my knowledge and understanding but yeah we push your feelings aside <laughs> it's like yep <laughs> because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings by being really truthful about what we're feeling on the inside because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because we know what it's like for to have our feelings hurt right so anyways, it's a really good book. I would recommend it. Because <sighs> when we're feeling traumatized, we're not feeling like we're, <laughs> we're getting, reaping the rewards of the good deeds that we've done for others, you know, and helping others and doing our best to, to show our love because and grace and all that wonderful stuff. <laughs> so, the way we believe, I think now in my own understanding, the way we believe we should receive that reward is not necessarily the way God will come through. Because we're not God, right? So, not necessarily the way that reward, reward or harvest or goodness is going to come back in our lives sometimes it's way different than what we think and especially now that i'm learning about more about codependency behaviors i tune in tune into my youtube channel <laughs> i think i don't think i've ever watched so much youtube since i uh since the past year or two <laughs> where I've been studying on, oh yes, oh yes, that makes so much, like everything's like, when it, you know when you're at church and somebody says the scripture, you're like, oh, I so resonate with that. It's that res revelation knowledge in the church world, right? <laughs> Anyways, and then you start watching these and it's like, wow, these are all people who have experienced bad experiences. They all have experienced fear, fears and hurt, if you will. And it's like, wow, it's not just me. <laughs> I'm not alone. It's like, oh. So when we say, you know, I remember praying, Lord, open up my spiritual ears and Lord, open up my spiritual eyes. What are we asking the Lord for, really? Discernment. Discernment. <sighs> We're asking discernment between good and evil. We're asking discernment between the truth, uh, you know, uh, and a lie. We're asking for discernment between uh, poor concepts and good concepts. We're asking for discernment between, uh, you know, the light and the darkness. We're asking discernment between religious beliefs and 
and the good belief, healthy beliefs. We're asking for uh, discernment. It's about our moral compass. We've been given a moral compass. You know, we've been given a moral compass. And that's our discernment gauge, right? That's our gauge to to discern or decide between what is good and evil. You know, this is our guide. This is our moral compass, is our guide. So we keep praying for that and we're wondering <laughs> why am I having overwhelming feelings of fears? And why am I feeling so anxious? Because there's a part of us that's feeling hurt, resentment. A little grudge here, a little grudge there. We're not even aware of it. <laughs> it happens to us when we try to do things on our own, basically, <laughs> and not look for help. When, we, when we're asking God for help, sometimes he sends people our way, and we're like, no, nah, not that person, God. <laughs> right? Anyways, just saying. <sighs> Uh, so yes, so when we ask God to open our spiritual ears or spiritual eyes, spiritual, we're asking them, we're asking him really. He brings people to us that talk to us about self-awareness, self-understanding, self-compassion, right? Uh, because we're not God. That's one thing for sure, right? Ah, if we consider ourselves God, then that would be kind of on the narcissistic spectrum, right? Uh, yeah. Or I'm the only one that can hear God's voice, nobody else can. No. <laughs> Many can hear God's voice. It's not one way, <laughs> right? Anyways, I just thought I'd mention that. Cause sometimes it's hard to have discernment. It's hard to find our moral compass. And that moral compass and discernment and discretion can turn into something really ugly, if you will, or something very uh, horrible or disregarded if we don't know what that is, if we're not aware. And that comes through moral compass. The more we work it, the more we use it, the more we can apply it in our lives. What if we don't use it? We just put it on the shelf thinking, oh, I don't need a moral compass. I'm doing everything right. <laughs> I'm the elite. <laughs> well, once we get off of our high horse and then we're like, oh, God, I humble myself. If I come across as arrogant, I don't want to do that. If I come across as a bully, well, I don't want to take part of that. If I come across as a, uh, you know, like I have to be right on everything and every subject and every topic, well, I don't want to do that. You know, I just want to connect with you, God, in a holy, not a holy, like, then thou attitude, but I just want to connect with you so I can learn as I'm listening to people share their stories you know i have a group of people that are on my uh youtube playlist that are shows that i watch the people i listen to people i resonate with it's like oh yes you know studies i probably try to study back in my 30s but i was too busy writing and <laughs> try to figure it out myself <sighs> you know Nothing wrong with writing, because it really actually helps. For me, journaling really helps. But it wasn't journaling back then for me. It was writing books. Journaling was the first couple books. And then after that, it turned into, like, quote, huh, more or less uh, rec reciting the Bible scriptures, scripture and verse. Every time I heard a scripture and verse, I church, I would just write, go home for hours, just write, write about the scripture and verse, and do a lot of repetitious stuff. That was religion. That was religious. I couldn't get a brisk. 
that I couldn't get a, a grasp that I had a lot of hurt within me, that I had a lot of fear within me, and that was f hindering me from growing and maturing and, and you know, being open to listening to other people's stories. Because when we're in ourselves and traumatized, feeling hurt, we've had a share of bad experiences. <laughs> we've had our share of uh, unhealthy relationships. We want to, the, the thing we want to do when we have children is we want to show them how to be loving and kind and understanding towards one another. Because life is precious, <laughs> you know. So on the concepts of, again, the thoughts of fears and resentment, it's all about our own fears, our own re <laughs> resentments, our own hurts, right? Our, our fears and our hurts. Uh, whether it's through uh, poor communication, whether it's through uh, not knowing our worth, and not actually understanding that each and every one has a moral compass to not cross the lines, to not cross other people's lines and boundaries, and to quickly apologize if we find ourselves in a situation like that, say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to st step on your toe there, or I'm sorry, I really didn't mean to say what I said like that. I must have been either tired, hungry, fearful, or hurt somehow. It is still not your fault, <laughs> right? It's not your fault. My feelings are my feelings, my thoughts are my thoughts. You know, we don't want to project our hurt feelings on others. We don't want to project our fearful feelings on others. What we want to do as we mature is learn to heal that. And how do we do that? when we seek for, for our spiritual eyes and spiritual ears to be open, we're seeking for self-awareness. We're seeking for uh, understanding and knowledge, right? Uh, and when somebody is, doesn't want to grow, and somebody's just stuck in their old, that's how we view it, doesn't mean that's what they are doing, right, necessarily. But if that's how we view it, then maybe we just need more self-time, alone time, to work on those issues. Write down, right? The feelings will. What is that about? You write down the main... Actually, let me pull it up. Feelings will, the one that I have on my app. So the main feelings, whoops, they're going to come right up. So the main ones are anger. Am I feeling angry about something? Right? Which all has to do with, <laughs> am I feeling angry? Am I feeling fearful? Am I feeling surprised? Am I feeling happy? Am I feeling sad? Am I feeling discuss. And here's the feelings will. Now, if you look at it, what do you see? Hmm. Oop. What I see is the main, the main one is surprised, bad, fearful, angry, disgusted, and sad. Now, we decide where our story goes, right? We decide that as we do feelings. So if we're feeling bad, you'll notice on the feeling bad example, bored, busy, stressed, tired. So it's a sign of fears and resentment, right? Somewhere in there, when I'm feeling bad, I'm feeling fear, and I'm feeling resentment. I'm feeling afraid, 
right? It's just a, a way to understand that our values matter. <laughs> For us to understand that our values is not based on what somebody else says, whether we're value, we have value or not. Our self-worth is not based on whether somebody says, <laughs> you know, we have worth or not. Uh, our belief system, our feelings, our thoughts is not based on what somebody else thinks or feels about us. And that's not coming from, a, and this is my hum, 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 humble opinion here. You know, it's about based on what we feel about ourselves. How do we feel? You know, when we ask a lot of other people, hey, my name, like call center work. Hey, my name is Jeanette. How may I help you today? Right? On a daily and every call. And then come, someone comes on the line and with anger, with fearful thoughts. Oh, you're thinking they're angry at me when you first start. And you feel it all over your body. You're feeling traumatized. It affects your psyche. And then when you learn, like, oh, as we mature and we discover the moral compass and our own moral compass, our own discernment gauge, our own discretion, like, oh, they are angry and that's their thing. They're telling you their issue. Oh, and here I thought it was all about me, myself and I, but it's not. It's not always about what we did or what we didn't do. Some people just like to sow a seed of have, uh, dissension, seed of doubt, seed of insecurity, seed of hurt, because that's all they know. They've been traumatized, re-traumatized, until they learn to heal from that. And the less they're in a situ the less they spend time with that person that they felt traumatized about. Maybe it was something not just about the other person, but about themselves that they have never uh, worked on. It's not about being lazy, you know. It's not about being out of touch. It's not about the wrong diagnosis, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying, sometimes it's about our self-awareness as we ask for our spiritual eyes or spiritual ears to be open. It's about discovering a sense of self, who we are, what makes us think, what gives us the thoughts we have, where is it coming from, do I like my thoughts, what have I been doing that causes me to have those thoughts, or what have I been watching that causes me to have those thoughts, you know, write down a few questions. And Q&A's for yourself, and you'll be like, oh, yeah. I can see how I think it's all about the other person when things go wrong. Uh, but instead of asking what happened to them, we could do that, because that's the first step of self-awareness. But what happened to us? <laughs> we think it's okay not to, to let go of our boundaries. <laughs> to say, you know what, I feel safe with this kind of talk. Hmm, I don't feel safe with that kind of talk. Right, the things that make you feel unsafe, right? Screaming makes me feel unsafe. Yelling makes me feel unsafe. Slamming of doors make me feel unsafe. Shouting makes me feel unsafe, right? And then you're like, oh. Yeah, hmm, do I behave like that sometimes? It's okay to be honest with yourself, right? <laughs> it's okay to be, to have that connection with yourself. Some people call it the good, the bad, and the ugly, and it's so true. You sit down and you write it down. What's the good in that? What's the ugly in that? And what's <laughs> the not so good? And what's bad, right? Again, bad, ugly is about fearful 
things than we, we may experience, whether it's in the past or currently. And that, again, is probably about fearful things and hurtful things that we experienced in our past that are still in our current lives. It's not about getting rid of people. It's about letting go of that hurt inside. It's probably about enmeshment, where that's where we connect with them is through the bad and the ugly. And when we start looking at with our eyes open, we see the beauty, right? We start seeing the beauty. We break through that barrier, if you will. Now it's only the half, the glass half full. I mean, we know that bad and ugly just means pessimistic view, right? And then we know the good is about, some people might say sanctimonious. They think they're holier than thou. They think this and they think that. When in reality, we don't know what other people think. <laughs> right? We can, we can speculate, but we don't know what's going on in the thought life. Uh, so the more we learn about ourselves and our self-connection and our self-awareness and, oh, is this healthy? I like the contrast thinking. Is this healthy behavior or is it a healthy behavior? Is this a healthy way of thinking or is that unhealthy? When we're looking for the bad and the good <laughs> and looking for the good and the bad, you know. As we uh, do our studies, we're like, wow. You know, so all those labels that were put on me, those were, oh, those were how they were feeling about themselves. You know? Like they say, Jeanette is blah, 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 blah. Right? It's just a theory. But Jeanette is blah, 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 blah. And it's all like this uh, fear and hurt from a person that's feeling a lot of hurt. And, and uh, fear. That's what's going to come out of their mouths. It's not going to be something pretty. <laughs> and that's okay. They're learning about themselves. Think about that. They're also learning about themselves as they express the expression instead of suppressing, expressing, right? They're learning about their own moral compass and their own, like, what they're willing to put up with and not willing to put up with. It's a learning process. Oof. Sometimes people have delayed development or experienced it. I call it jet lag <laughs> when there's too much going on. Too much stimulation, too many people speaking at once. Just feel the sense of, oh, why is this going on? I don't like it. It doesn't feel right to me, right? So, yeah, we discover what we like and what we don't like. Uh, yeah. Anyways, healing is a process, and... Uh, I pray that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that you have your experience, your healing process at your own pace, on your own time, and that you discover yourself, the beauty within, it's okay. It's okay for you just to be you. <sighs> yeah, to be the real you. <laughs> to express those feelings of hurt. and To express those feelings of fear. To express those feelings that you're experiencing. It's okay. Right? Anyways, if you could also pull up the feelings wheel, like I said, I, I'll include that in the description box below. And all you need to do is click on the link and it will come up on your screen. Uh, you could view it on TV. You could view it on your phone app. You could view it wherever you please, on your computer. And uh, I pray blessing on your life. And you have yourself a great day.
And my list of fears and resentment will be down below. And again, it's about releasing the fears and the resentment. It's about releasing the tension. It's about releasing whatever negative uh, emotions that we need to heal before we can experience the good ones. It's not about being stuck, right? It's not about being a prison in our own minds of the negative stuff, the fearful words, fearful thinking, the resentful thinking, and wonder, am I a monster? Right? We got to bring it to uh, the middle ground for our own personal health, personal awareness, personal truth. And I like the feelings, Will. It's all about, yay, it's okay for me to have feelings. It's okay for me to have emotions. Right? And here we go. I'll take a little picture. I'm at 3,000. I'll include this one. <laughs> I'll include this one in the link below along with my list of fears and resentment. The reason why I do do the list of fears and resentment, which is a daily practice. Many already do this. And one that I find it really explains it well. She's usually on my Facebook page. That's one of my uh, <laughs> YouTube uh, people that's really... Like a lot of people do it, they just don't explain it the way she does. And there's a lot of other people that explain their technique, like CBT therapy. That Wow, I totally get it. I understand it because I'm taking the time to listen with my two ears. You all enjoy your day today.